And welcome back. We'll be doing some more with loops today and a little bit with files. What I've got here is a very plain little program here that's got a temporary variable or runtime number that we, from 5, which is from our last example, and then a little counter that ran it. And what I want to show is that I can actually just come into this, this happy code and write that number out. And if I didn't screw it up, there it goes. It prints 0 through 4, 0 through runtime since it's less than, and you can clearly see that this is code is going to run and just do this. Now, oftentimes in code, we want to be able to hang on to var variables and values for something that doesn't make sense inside of code. Or we may want permanent output of our code so that it hangs around indefinitely, and we use files for this. Um, the primary library that we use for files is the fstream library. That's what gives us our file streams. Just like the IO stream gives us our input output streams, the file streams gives us our file streams. And these two are both uh, children libraries of the stream library set that's out there. I think they're actually streams of iOS. But I can take this program now and I can create an output file stream and give it a name. I like giving things out data as a name for output. And you can see that as soon as I do this, the OS stream comes in nice and red, telling you that, of course, since we don't use namespace standard, we'll have to do standard. And that gives me a standard output file stream named out data. And then I need to tell it where to go put the data. I need to give it a file name. So out data has a special, incredibly hard command to remember that allows you to open files for output. It's called open. And in the open, I know that was humorous, and in the open you have to tell it the name of the file that you're looking for. Uh, in, in, in our work here, unless you're doing something special, using the, the results.txt means you can actually go into your file system and open that file with a regular text editor and see what's going on inside of it. And if you use .dat or nothing, then you've got to kind of, kind of tweak it a little bit to be able to get into it and open it, because right now file... Uh, allowances by extensions will just automatically open it up with notepad. Now I have now opened this file. To go with the opening you should always try to make a practice of closing files when you're done. Well I'm going to end up right at the end of my loop not needing this file anymore so I will use that again incredibly hard command that is almost impossible to remember called close to close the file. So now I've opened my file and I've closed my file. In C++, when you end a, a program, it will close your files for you. And if the operating system is being nice, it will have already written everything out to your file for you before it does that. That's not always guaranteed, or at least it hasn't been in the past, so it's just a good idea to practice the clean cleanliness of opening and then closing your files. Now, to write to a file is actually really, really, really hard. What you've got to do first is you've got to write out to the screen exactly what you want to see in your file. And then you've got to change the see out command that we have right here with the name of the file stream. Yep, that's it. That literally is all there is to it. So if you don't need to see it on the screen, you just change see out to out data, and now it will actually write the file. Now, an interesting side note you should know is when you open for output a file, if this file does not exist, it will be created for you. If this file does exist, it will be erased and then created for you. So this is a destructive command the way we write it right here. So now we have the outdata opening the file, the loop outputting each of those numbers that we see down here that were on our screen that we're not going to see anymore, and then we're closing the file. And if we run it, you'll see it runs and says, hey, I'm done. Now. What you got to notice though is when you go to your C Lion folder, and this one is just untitled one, and you look, there's our main, we don't see a file anywhere in here. What we have to notice is that the C Make Build Debug folder is where all of our stuff is happening right now. In the environment that we've been playing with, this is the debug uh, co 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 compilation command set. So this is where we're telling it to put it. And here you'll see there's our results.txt. You'll also see right here is an untitled Unix executable, since I'm working on Apple. Um, that is the file that's actually being run for us when we want to run. But there's our text. If I select it and bring it up, 
you can see there are numbers. So we wrote directly to our file. This is where it hides. Now, if we wanted to, we could write also directly to, let me bring that back real quick. We could write and then write it to the screen and to the file, and that way we could see both of them. But the question is, okay, now we've got the ability to write to a file. How do I read from a file? Well, strangely enough, input file streams are the same as output file streams. And I'll go ahead and make one here. And I call it data just to, to keep it clean. Now, I'm going to use the same exact file, so I can't, doing it this way, I cannot open it for both reading and writing. There is a way of doing it, but not right now. So I have to wait to open this file until I've closed this file from outdata. Otherwise, your, your pointers to your files get all messed up. So I can now take in data, do that incredibly hard command to open a file of open, and give it the same exact name that I gave it up there, and it will open and find the file for me. Now, if I want to run it, I need to make sure of a couple things first. There's a couple of key points here. Anytime you open a file, you really should check to make sure that it was successful in opening up. And most of our stream variables have the ability to check to see if they actually opened or they're good. So I can go in data, and there you can see is open. That means I successfully opened the file. It doesn't mean there's anything in the file. It just means that I successfully opened the file. So I can say, hey, did I open that file? If it's open, there wasn't an error in opening it, now I can process the data in the file. And as we've talked in the past with loops, when I want to run a loop for a, a file or for other things that I don't know how many I'm going to get, even though I know that I used a for loop here and I only put out five things, let's just pretend I didn't know that. I just want to process this file. I'm going to not use a, a for loop to read a file. I'm going to use a while loop. Now, whiles are kind of tricky. There is a command to see if a file has reached the end of file yet. That's that dot EOF, end of file. So as long as I am not at the end of file, I want to read the numbers and write them to the screen. Well, to read numbers is just like our CN. We don't use CN, just like I took, that, took C out. We don't do standard CN. I replace any CN that's reading from the keyboard with in data, because it's an input file stream. And then I put it inside my little temporary variable. And then I output it. And with that, you can see I'll actually read the file. I'll process the file. When I get done with my file, what do I need to do? Yep. I need to close it. And this should read for us all the numbers that we had in there, 0 through 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you'll notice that if I if I was actually to open this file for editing, that the, the way we wrote this file out, at, at the end of every line, we have a new line character. So let's see what happens if I run this thing. Ooh, look what happened. I got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. Why did I get two fours? Well, here's what happens with files. When you're reading to the end of a file, when you use the end of file command, the only way you actually get an end of file message that comes back and sets the end of file marker is you have to read past the last thing in the file. You have to go past all the data. When we read using our in data temp line like this, which is just like CN, it stops on white space, which means the very last row, the very last four that we wrote, has a new line char character sitting after it. It's not going to read it until you try to read the next one. So I come down here, I read 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I come back up and I ask, am I at the end of the file? And the answer is no. I haven't read past that last new line character in the file. So I have to go, OK, try to read it. As soon as I do this, I blow past that end of file. I print out 4 again because that's what I had written inside my little temporary variable. And I go back up and test, and now I stop. How can you prove this? Well, if you come here and you just reinitialize your variable to 0, you'll see it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. That shows you that when we reinitialized it, that last read did not pick up a 4. There's no, there's no second 4 there. It read and it died right here. 
So it just dies, comes back up, and stops. There is a way around this. There's a way to, to, to not use end of file, although it, it's problematic sometimes, is you can actually replace this right here inside this right here. Watch. I can now say, hey, as long as I am successfully able to read something, I don't need this anymore at this point anyway, as long as I'm successfully able to read something from the file, print it out and watch. Maybe not. There we go. Eh, helps if I get rid of that extra semicolon. See? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's because when I did the 0 through 4 the first time, when I read 4, even though that new line character is there and I print it out, when I come back up here and I try to read it again, I go past that new line character and I error because the in data, the file stream or the IO stream, either one of these two, both return success or failure to the, 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 the call for this. So this is a shortcut way of getting through to making sure that even if you have new line characters in the last line, you don't read another blank line. A little bit longer than normal, but this gives you the, the basics of using loops to write stuff to a, to a file using out data and to read stuff using in data. These two things will come in really handy come on, coming on here in the, in the near future with functions and everything else. So hope you're having a good time. Have a great day.